Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of UC Solutions. Today, we are going back to the eight part series, teaching you how to reupholster a sofa from start to finish. Now, you guys know the last episode was a skirt. Today, we are gonna be handling the outside back, which is very important because the outside back is one of the first things to come off when you tear down, and one of the last things besides the dust cover to put back on when you reupholster. And the following episode after this is gonna be the outside arm. So you're gonna to need to know how to take off the outside back to get to the outside arm, but I'm getting ahead of myself. For all those who are newcomers, if you guys aren't newcomers, go ahead and jump, skip through this video, get to the meat of the actual video. Thank you guys for coming. For the newcomers, this is an eight part series that teaches you how to reupholster a sofa from start to finish. And it's part of a larger, it's only little segments, excerpts, a much larger video that we did on our website, ucprivatecourses.com. You can check that out. That is eight plus hours long. It's a very long video, but it is full of little tips and tricks and also the essentials when it comes to reupholstering. And we break it down step by step and we handle it not in the sense of like a fast cut, you know, we're gonna do this real fast. We take our time when it comes to it. What I think is very important for somebody that's new is to take your time. This isn't a rush, this isn't a race. Enjoy it, have fun, learn as much as possible because everything that you learn about the sofa can apply to other furniture as well. And that is our whole point when it comes to these longer videos. Take your time, enjoy it. It's a nice process and you're learning something that, that many, not many people know how to do. So for this episode with the outside back, it's very good because you learn how to use what that is called, some people call it curvies. Other people, like myself, call it ply grip. Ply grip is great because it replaced hand sewing when it comes to the actual sides of your furniture. So when you have that nice clean edge, whether you have cording right up against it or not, we have that nice clean edge, that's, that's ply grip. Either that or like the tacking strip that they do, not like, not the cardboard over there, but there's literally like a metal strip with nails that go through it. I don't like that one as much. It's a little bit harder to use. That stuff is great. So we're gonna, you're gonna learn how to use that kind of stuff and it's gonna apply to many styles of furniture. So enough of my jibber jabber. Let's go ahead and get into the video. It's beautiful, man. You really do good work. Thank you, man. The tension's perfect. The lineup is spot on. So they're both looking really good, man. Okay, we're good to go. So now we gotta do is the back, right? Yes. Now, mm -hmm. to do the back, what we have already is the foundation fabric. Dad put this on beforehand. So this is nice and tight, ready to go. So what we need to do first is put on the cording. The cording is coming up from the bottom, up on the sides, and then up over to the top. The mm -hmm. only thing is, is you're not going to be going around the scroll mm -hmm. on that arm. And you're not going to be doing a 90 degree either. So we want to have a nice curve similar to what the previous upholsterer had. And to do that, mm -hmm. we made a little template. Uh, why do we make a template? Oh, the template's easy because, what? why? Because you can just duplicate it so easy on the other side. Rather right. than doing what we did for the pleats and measuring them, which they did turn out well, it's just faster to be able to flip that over and do the reverse on the other side. Exactly. So what we're going to do so we made a nice little template. I think we both agree that it looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now, I stapled a little too far up here. It'd been better right. if I come down here. But it's going to be covered up by the cording. We're going to cover easily. it up. It's fine. And the other side's safe. Yes. This here, I'm going to pull over just a little bit more and just maybe maybe a couple of pow, pow, pow right there. Yeah, just making that sure down. that they're covered Yeah, as well. And that's it. So I'm going to get started on the cording mm -hmm. up here and then uh, show you with pins. We're going to pin this out with the template just to show that after we fix this little area. To be able to follow the welt with the pins. Exactly. You could come up and make a turn, but it won't look that good no. with this scroll. So we're trying to stick to the to the uh, the curves of the furniture. And that's also the previous to... upholsterer too, because yes. that's what the client had before. And you never want to change something without the client's knowledge. No. The best that no. you can. Absolutely. All right. All right, so we'll go ahead and pin that out, meaning put that up there and make those pin marks. Mm -hmm. Staple and um, uh, staple the welt on there. Yep. And we're good to go. And then we'll move on to the next step. Sounds like a plan. Perfect. All right. All right, so just as we said, we're gonna start off with the cording at the bottom and then work our way up. I did go ahead and throw in a few pins. I haven't done on the other side just yet, but just to give you an idea of what it is. 
here you can see with the body cam. So we made that mark again right where the outside arm meets the bottom of the scroll. And we just took a few pins and then walked them around the actual template that we made. We just stuck the pins in. We didn't do anything fancy like trying to get them back out, um, you know, in and out as we usually do for a subcover. So this is very simple. And we're just going to start taking them away as we do the cording. Now with the cording, there's a few things that you want to look out for. Number one is that you need to make sure that you have the cording right on the edge. So this seam is right on, let me show you on the body cam, this seam right here is right on the edge of the frame. So that only the cord is seen, which is uh, actually not too hard to do. So don't get intimidated. You want to up as close as possible. I shot a little too far away from the seam. I want it a little bit closer. And we're going to run it all the way up. Another thing that you want to pay attention to as well is that we have the seam allowance for this cording. And sometimes the seam allowance will open up like this, right? So the, the stitches are still good, but just the two pieces of fabric fold away from each other. And if you're not paying attention, you start stapling. Sometimes you can have where the seam allowance is peeking through the other or behind the actual cording. And that's not good looking at all. So just make sure that the seam allowance is where it's supposed to be on the inside of it and just keep going all the way up. So I'm gonna feel where the seam is. Right. Make sure it's right on the edge of the frame. Double check how it's looking, it's looking good. I'm gonna leave the bottom undone for right now. I'm not gonna stable to the frame at all because I'm gonna show you how to finish this off later on. And I'm just gonna keep going up, give myself a little more hose. Like so. Sometimes the cording gets a little thin. That's okay. Sometimes that happens when you're sewing it or cutting it. And right where the actual uh, pins are for this scroll area, that's where I want the seam to be. Just like how it's on the edge of the frame, we want that seam to be right where the pins were. So right here, take that one out. Double checking, everything looks good. I'm gonna tuck this in a little bit, put a staple there. That's good. So I moved the uh, cording a little bit, just push it over a little bit and put another staple right there, just in case. Keep going up. So right there, like so. Okay, now we're going to reach the top. Don't want to take out too many pins just yet. Sometimes it does help just to see how it looks. Step back a little bit. Okay. I like that pin idea dad gave us. Worked out like a charm. So I'm gonna keep running along. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. You guys don't need to see it. It's basically just starting from the top and working way down because it's the other side. Uh, run along the top. Then I'm gonna come back to you and then we're gonna start putting on the outside back fabric just like we did for the outside arm. You fold it up so the arrows are pointing down. You have the cardboard, you do that all the way up to right about here. Then you switch the ply grip and you go down the rest of the uh, cording length. And that's it. So let me continue with this and I'll get back to you when we do that. All right, so 
We are at that stage. I've put the cording all the way around. I stepped back just to make sure that the work looked good and it did. So we're going to move forward with it. Uh, got the outside back fabric on the inside back. Now this might be getting a little confusing, but it makes sense. Okay. When you put your outside back fabric on the inside back, the arrows when it's going down like this and over are still going to be pointing up. When you hold it like this, they're going to be pointing down. And then when you point, when you fold it over on itself, they're going to be pointing up. So the whole point is you just want your outside back fabric to be pointing up when it is done. We do have our center notch here. I am eyeballing it to the center mark right there. I'm not going to measure it. And I did just double check. Grabbing this end. We have enough for this side. Grabbing this end fell down. This end, we have enough for the other. All right. Now, just to make it look nice, it probably won't hold. This is the thing about fabrics. When you're doing a um, long run, when it comes to any fabric, especially this fabric, this seems to stretch. Well, this side, the left to right, it doesn't stretch that bad. But... Um, it's very hard to keep a small print pattern uh, in the same line. So for example, if I'm trying to match, this whole point is, if I'm trying to match the inside back with the outside back, you can match in the center. By the end, you're probably not going to be matching anymore. It's just because you're pulling, you're trying to get everything straight. And that's okay because it's such a fast pattern that your eyes aren't going to be like, oh, wow, that's really off. It's going to be, well, it's everywhere. So it's can't, it can't keep track. But if it's a larger pattern, try to match it. This one is okay, but I'm still gonna try to center it with the inside back the best that I can. And to do that, I'm just lifting it up, looking at the underneath pattern and folding it over. Okay. I should have, I'm just gonna put a permanent staple right there. Should have plenty of fabric and I think I already did check, but I might as well check again. No use of doing all this and it doesn't work. Yep, I got plenty of fabric to pull over. Okay. Strain this thing back out. Again, it's exactly like the outside arm. So, like I said, when it comes to reupholstering and slip covers, it's basically doing the exact same thing for different parts of your furniture. You find yourself repeating the same process, which is great because it's it is a challenging um, trade to learn, but once when you get it, uh, you're pretty good for just about any furniture you work with. Okay. Again, I'm just double checking the pattern. We're going off just a little bit, but like I said, I was expecting that. Making sure that it is about the same amount hanging down. Might be a little bit more here. That's okay. Just trying to get all the wrinkles, ripples out. Yeah, we're off now. Okay. There. And right, see where it starts making this curve right there? Me, the body cam picked it up right there. So I'm going to shoot right about there. A little bit away from it. Liking it right there. All right. Do the same thing for the other side. I'm keeping an eye on how much the fabric is uh, rippling at the top because that tells you if you have too much down here. Look at that. You see that? So if you pull too much, you'll start rippling right here. If you don't have enough, you'll start pulling up. So you just want to get a nice in between and you will be set. Well, like this is perfect. All right. This one's actually lining up on this side. Okay. Exact same thing here. Double checking. Looks good. Throw one more in here. This fabric is pulling up just a little bit, so I don't want to see that. I'm just going to staple that down. It was folding on itself. Not the outside back fabric, but the foundation fabric. 
in the inside back fabric. And I'm going to leave that alone. All right, next step is I have to grab the cardboard. Everything's looking pretty good. That's just because of all the excess right here. Everything looks flat on top. I'm liking that. Next step, like I said, is grab the cardboard, which I put away. I'm going to get that, and after I do, after I have it, I'll go ahead and get started on putting it on the top. All right, so I have the cardboard here. Get enough off the roll. Sometimes when you work on the actual roll, it'll bend on itself and cause, just like right here, a little crease. This stuff is so thin. It used to be thicker. It used to be higher quality. Still does the job, but just a little more trouble. I'm going to need my glasses. And to the exact same point, you're probably tired of hearing me say this, but it just cements it into your mind and my mind that this is exactly the same as the outside arm. The only thing is, let's just pretend you have two fronts because with the front, you had to do the um, ply grip right up against the cording. With this, it's just like doing it underneath a scroll, except it's the scroll end part is the cording right here. So we're going to staple right at the top. We're going to stop it, like I said, right where the curve starts or right before the curve starts. If you need to add any more cardboard, the nice thing about cardboard is since it is on a roll, you could literally take a, you know, half inch square little piece and add on to it or you can start off and add all on a whole new strip so it's not like you have to be perfect and you're like oh man you know what i didn't quite get where i wanted to right here you can just go ahead and fold this back over take a little strip of cardboard and put some more right there so i'm going to go ahead and start um stapling this right up to where the cording is once when i finish with that i'm going to come back to you and we're going to start doing the ply grip right up here. In fact, I'm going to finish up this cording and, sh and do that for you. And this thing's going to be done. Let's do it. Got the cardboard on for the top. Next step, we're going to move on to the cording. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to show you this one side. It's very simple. You've already seen me do this before. If I can get my scissors out. Okay, I'm cutting about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter away from the finished edge where I want it to be. That's sharp. Hold on. There's a little staple star. In fact, that's how I got my little fresh cut right there. That was yesterday. Move this cord up to the appropriate length. Snip it, use it as a marker. Snip the cord, fold this over on itself. I am gonna have to jump in front of the camera. Move this back. Okay, I'm sitting on some scissors. There we go. That's one thing, this is a huge side point. That is one thing that is kind of funny about reupholstering, especially large pieces. It's like working on a car. You never, really have enough room see you're always in like weird positions trying to get it done it's just a little hard to film all right there we go cording is set and ready to go i'm going to take off the excess right here that's it Next, we are going to start put start to put on the uh, let me untie this the poly. Why am I saying poly? The ply grip. As we said before, the holes for the ply grip go right up against the cording. Okay, so we have reached. The part of the video where I'm going to show you how to get that free course. You have four different courses to choose from. It's very simple. 
go to our website, ucprivatecourses.com. And on the home page, you're going to scroll down and there's going to be a little button that says video tutorials. It's going to have a little picture of one of the video tutorials. You're going to click on it and it's going to show you all the video tutorials that you have at your disposal. And there's four different ones. Okay. You could get the bundle as well, but that one won't be free, unfortunately. But you can choose one of the four for free. You click which one you want, and then you click add to cart. There's going to be a little pop-up that comes up, and I know what happens because instinctually I do it too. You click cancel, or you click close, and you're like, okay, now what? Well, that is the way that you're going to get your free video. So allow the pop-up to come up, put in your email address, and that is the email that we're going to use to send you the coupon code to zero out your cart. Okay. Once your cart's zeroed out, you go ahead and proceed to checkout and you can watch your video as many times as you want on our website. It's, gonna, it's not going to be any place else except on our website. It's very simple. So you log in, you go back to your video, you watch it, and then you do your project and you go back to it later on if you need it. Do whatever you want. It's really good. So that is how you get to your video for free using ucprivatecourses.com. Now there's a little, ooh, what was that? Now there's a little bonus that I wanna give you guys too, which is only gonna happen for a short period of time. So from the time that you're watching this, if it's before the end of March, 2022, so if you're watching this and it's not March 20, the end of March, 2022, you have a chance of winning a mattress if you place an order with us. So instead of just going out with the free video, you could pay for the video, and then actually get an entrance to win the mattress, or you could just add another thing, like let's just say a throw pillow or a bed pillow, and then that will put in an entry to win a mattress up to a king size for free. So I wanna give you guys that little bonus if you guys are like, hey, I don't need a mattress. That's cool, go ahead and get the videos and enjoy it, or get the video and enjoy it, or you know, throw in the little bucks here and maybe get a king size mattress. It's pretty cool, so enough of that. Let's go ahead and get back to your outside back. We didn't say that before, now you know. Okay. So this is what we're gonna be dealing with right here. Just to get you guys and myself an idea, you wanna lay it out how it's gonna be inside there. So when we fold this over, but the ply grip's gonna be right here as well. Ply grip's gonna start just like this and then go all the way down. That's the nice thing about ply grip too. They, um, they also call it curvies. The reason why is because you get to bend it to whatever direction you want, like so. So it goes around curves. Let me get back up here. Okay. Grab the ply grip. I'm going to have to change angles for you guys to see this a little bit better. So let me do that next. As promised, we gave you a better angle of the actual um, scroll area so that we can show you how to do the uh, ply grip. The one thing I did want to mention too as well, I did neglect to mention two things actually. They both came to my mind. Is number one, when you're doing the cardboard and you're stapling, my gun... It's pretty good at it. It's not too extreme where it shoves a staple really deep into the wood or staples really deep into the wood. What could happen is if you have a very powerful gun, you can shoot a staple and go straight through the cardboard. So just try to keep an eye on that. Try to back it off if it's doing that. You guys obviously know what you're doing. So if that happens, you know what to do. Um, another thing is as well, after you are finished with putting on the cardboard on the top, please just double check if it looks right. Take it down, take your time, look it over, and you're like, okay, is there any spots that are getting away from it? So like, for example, the cardboard is a little bit too low, so you start seeing the seam of the actual cording. If you find that spot, go ahead and fix that. You're better off fixing it now than when you have uh, everything ready. It's not too late after you have the ply grip on and even the Daycron, but it's still just easiest just to fix whatever you have at that moment. Laying up the inside or outside back to where I want it. So it's nice and straight. We got a straight line. It's not pulled back. It's not pulled down. It is just where I need it to be. 
I'm gonna cut straight up. And I wish these scissors had a better tip, and they don't. But that's okay, we're gonna make it work. Sometimes the tips of the scissors get stall and just starts gnawing at it. Okay, this way, when you fold it over, I'm gonna cut just a hair more. You have this loose. In fact, I might might not even mess with it right now. You have this loose, so you can put this in the ply grip. Okay, so that's why we made the cut straight up, right along to where, as you can see with the body cam, just to make sure, um, straight up along with the edge of the plot of the cardboard. Okay, we're gonna start it. We have a cut edge right here along. That's where the um, hole was. So we cut right on the edge of the hole. And the nice thing about this too, just to pay attention, is the teeth end right here has a nice rounded edge. So if you went ahead and took your scissors and cut right in between the teeth, which we do sometimes, just so you can see that, you're gonna have a very sharp edge right there, and you don't want that because it's gonna poke a hole right into your fabric. So if you have to do that, round it off, or better yet, have it start with an edge that's already pre-rounded off at the factory, which we have. Lay it up right next to each other, get the fabric that you just cut out of the way. Okay. Grab your gun, watch your fingers, and shoot. Hmm. Perfect. Might be able to move that up just a little bit. Gets a little bit tricky right here because you have to lift this edge up. There we go. I want this a little bit further up. All right. So even though I already stapled it, the end, you can still manipulate it and move it up. And I have it where I want it right now. Okay, I missed that one. I got that one though. That one, I got enough. Okay, we're good. Continue on going around. The curves, the apply grip, will go around the curves quite easily. One last thing, just as a warning so you're not surprised, if you have too much pressure on your thumb and you shoot and the staple carries the ply grip closer to the wood, you will get pricked with, your, um, with the teeth on your thumb or any finger that's there. So it's better to off not have it near there. Yeah, the teeth. All right, so we're going to continue down with the ply grip. And just for a point real quick, my dad reminded me, you don't want to take the ply grip all the way down because that's usually what you do if you don't have a skirt. Since we do have a skirt, as you well know, you need to measure how far down would you need to go with the ply grip so, so that you uh, have a nice clean line for the back. That's a great question. The answer is... I don't know, no. You need to measure from the front because the front has that padding, like I said, in the scroll area where it lets you know where they stop so they can have the skirt. Our skirt is 10. In that case, we measured from the bottom of the leg all the way up to where we stopped the last ply grip, which was along with the uh, padding. Long story short, it was 10 and a quarter. So we are gonna do 10 and a, um, we're gonna do about 10 and a half. The reason why is because it was digging down, the front of the leg was digging down, so I wasn't able to get to the bottom of the leg there. Now, the thing is, you don't wanna have your staple right up against um, your mark for the 10 because that's where your skirt's gonna be, and you're gonna not be able to hide that. So if you're able just to go ahead and fold it and get it further down, you might have a gap what I'm saying in between the ply grip and the staple, that's fine. 
just don't want to have the plug up there because you won't be able to staple for your skirt. And you don't want to have the staple there because you won't be able to hide it with your skirt when you put the skirt on. Long story short, we're going to stop this thing at 10 and a half. That's our guesstimate. And obviously staple below 10 and you're going to be fine because your skirt's going to cover it. Let's do it. And we will get back to you after we do both sides. Then I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do the uh, Daycron, fold it over, do the plot, do the bottom first, then do the ply grip, and then the outside back will be done. The next step is for us to put together our skirts and start doing that as well. Fun. And it's gonna be it's gonna look great. I'm actually kind of excited to see it. All right, so I have the ply grip and the cording set on that side. Again, it's a 10 inch, but I did about 10 inches and a half up from the bottom of the leg. So for example, here all the way up to here, and that will make sure that we don't staple when we're stapling on our skirt and hit the ply grip. Next step is to do the Daycron. Very simple, we've done it before. All you need to do is have about, I'll say an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half, I don't know. But I'm just guesstimating here of Daycron. This is quarter, this is, yeah, this is a quarter inch Daycron. It's gonna go all the way over to the other side. And just like we did for the last part is we're gonna cut just beyond the ply grip. Not too much, because when you tuck it in, it is gonna eat up the teeth and teeth won't be able to grab onto the fabric, the outside back fabric. Next step, do this. After that, we're gonna take the outside back fabric, roll it over, and then start working on the bottom, stapling the bottom, then start putting it inside the ply grip. In fact, me, it's a little far away from the cording. No, push that up a little bit closer. There we go. All right, let's get to it. All right, just so you guys can see it real quick. Went ahead and started stapling underneath. Very simple, start in the middle. You guys know the story, go out to the sides. Uh, even pressure, the nice thing about this is with a pattern, you can look to see if the pattern stays the same at the bottom. And I try to make sure I got it as close as possible so that like, let's just say this dot is right on the corner or right on the edge. And it's looking very good. This side right over here, you can't see it's cut off. But this side over here, I already started to do the ply grip. I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. You've already seen me do the ply grip before, so I'm not going to bore you with like the details. Even if it's curved, it's the exact same thing. Fold the ply grip down a quarter of the way. Take your regulator, start working it. Always keep an eye on your pattern, even when it comes to a ply grip, to see if it's what dot is closest to the edge and keep that same dot in that row. So let's just say, if this was the edge, that dot, then you continue to move down that same line so that it's uh, straight. And I've already done it with that side. Take a step back after you do one side, check the middle, check everything, make sure it's not, uh, the pattern isn't off by any means. Do the other side before you hammer that down. So I haven't hammered the left side if you're sitting inside the sofa, the left side down just yet. So that's still in place. The teeth are holding it. It's not hammered down. Gonna do the same here. Hammer that side down, hammer this side down. Come back to you guys and just finish up one quarter so you can see that again. Uh, but other than that, that is it. We are finished with the outside back. The next step after I come back to finish up that corner is to do the, um, do the skirts. Actually, before I um, leave, and finish this thing up. I wanted to go ahead and tell you about the top. I did see a few spots where the cardboard wasn't as close as I wanted to be for the cording. So what I did is I took just a little strip of cardboard, tore it off the roll, and put it up right against it, even over top of the old cardboard. You can't tell where it is because we have that nice quarter inch uh, fold over of the Daycron, so everything looks good. So that was when I was, that was after I put on the actual layer of Daycron. So if you do notice something, just fix it right then and there, you're gonna be fine. And um, yeah, this this cardboard is so thin, they can just add it up to it and it'll be completely, completely okay. So that's just a little tip, just in case you run into that problem, because I'm sure you will, I did obviously right there. 
So just to get out of it. All right, so as promised, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to finish up this corner. Stay crown's a little close. Just want to stay. Actually, got a pin. Does trim away a little bit, just to make it a little bit, tiny bit easier. Nice. All right, now. When you're at this stage, let me just get the body cam to see this as well. When you're at this stage, there's two things I want you to look for with your pattern. One, how far you're going to be pulling down. Because I'm going to be pulling down pretty severely on this. But before I go ahead and just start pulling down, I need to get around this leg right here. And I'd like to actually establish this side first. The reason why, I was about to say, well, I could go ahead and cut this out. I don't want to do that since I'm gonna to have to be pulling this over enough so that this, this pattern right here lines up, okay? So see these dots right at the edge of the cording, again, the body cam, dots right at the edge of the cording, wanna keep that same line. If I go ahead and cut right here and then pull over, my cut's gonna shift and it's not gonna be useful to me anymore. So I want to be able to get that pull out first. Another thing I want to do too, is I'm going to cut this thing down. I don't need that much. Following that pattern line all the way down. It's a little bit of, uh, there's a very little to work with, but that's okay. So we're going to be folding it over anyway. Let me get my gun in the right position. I am pulling substantially. And fire right there and there. That gives me a good gap in between my uh, ply grip and my first staple. I wanted that so then I'm making sure that this staple is going to be hidden with the actual skirt. Same process, but I'm only going to throw in one staple now. Right there. I want enough room so I can fold this under. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut around the leg because I pulled over enough 
so that my cut will still be useful when I'm finished. So I'm feeling where the leg is, going straight up, right where the leg meets the frame. That's where I want to stop. In fact, I'm going to pull just a teeny bit, your cut just a little bit more. Pull down. Okay, I'm seeing that this, this diamond matches that diamond. So I want them both right there, right on the edge of the wood. Boom. There we go. Don't need this much. Again, just about an inch, inch and a quarter away from where the frame is. This doesn't have to look perfect, but I do want it to look somewhat pretty, just in case they look underneath the skirt. I don't want them to see it. And it's like, ooh, you know, what the, what did they do to my furniture? Don't want that. All right. Raw edges are not nice looking. Secret with this, let's actually that work right there. Secret with this is just keep trying until you get it. That is the whole secret. So many times. It's just like, I don't think I can get any better. If you want to get a professional look, just keep working until you get that look. It might take you longer than a professional, but that's okay. It took the professional longer than it did him, like, you know, five years ago. For the professional, five years ago, he wasn't as fast as he is now. So, as you can tell, I'm not speeding Gonzalez either. I get the job done. That I'm gonna razor blade. If you see that with the body cam, and we are done. That is it. The outside back is finished. It looks mighty fine. All right. If by any chance your cording is having a little trouble meeting up with the ply grip, you can use that rubber, or not rubber, but plastic tip ha um, hammer, tacking hammer, to go ahead and flatten out the recording a little bit if it's causing you a problem if not then you're good but it's another tip just in case because you might be in that situation and don't know what to do we're finished with this next step tomorrow we are going to do the skirts we're going to start sewing them getting them ready pinning them up making sure that they're lining up correctly and all that good stuff and then after that we're going to do the cushions so you guys know how to do a sofa and that's that's amazing that's great because a lot of people don't know this information you know use them every day don't know how they work same thing with cars too it's good to know all right we'll see you then all right guys you have reached the end of this video and sadly we are closing out this eight part series next week with the outside arm but now you guys know how to do an outside back so let's just say a kid your kid a kid your kid it doesn't really matter a pet a mover, you moving the sofa, you accidentally damage the outside back. Now you guys know how to get it replaced, which is great. Next step again is the outside arm and that is going to be next week. And canonically it makes sense because you have to take out the outside back to get to the outside arm. And that's why we did it that way. We were thinking ahead, people. We do sometimes think ahead. Sometimes, not all the time. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. It really does mean a lot to us. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and check out the rest of our videos. We do have a good amount of other videos besides just this. It's very nice. If you like the content, please do give it a like as well. Let us know that we're doing a good job and we continue making more content like this. All right, and if you have any suggestions, which I do always appreciate hearing, leave it in the comment section below or any questions as well. Leave it down there, I will get to it been pretty busy in the past few weeks because we're getting dad to Arizona for his treatments. But uh, yes, I will be getting to your comments, I promise. Okay? And I mean that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you guys next week.